Ah, printed circuit boards. Green. Green is awesome. Green never went out of style. Black is the new green? No. The Azrock Live Mixer. Orange is the new green. Uh, well, and also black. There's black. There's plenty of black. Now there's the Live Mixer and the Live Mixer Special Edition. What makes the Special Edition special? A special expansion card. I'm gonna show you in just a second. <laughs> It's nice to know the violent orange aesthetic continues right under the motherboard, even the heatsink. Nice. I don't really like struggling with zip ties. You know? So it's not just the visual aesthetic on this motherboard. If you if you take a look at the feature set on the back, you know, it's got blazing M.2, dual PCIe X4 slots. More PCIe slots is a motherboard feature. Yeah, there are very few AM5 motherboards that feature more than two or three slots. And this is, you know, your high speed X16 slot directly to the CPU. And then we've got two X4 slots. Now some motherboards, it's an X1 or an X2 slot, even though it's physical X4 or physical X16. But these are two physical X16 electrical by four, which is important if you're rocking Linux or home server or anything like that. We'll talk more about that in a minute. There's also a, quite a bit of USB connectivity here, but this is a B650 motherboard, not an E. So they're not trying to kill it on cost or complexity or adding in controllers. There's eight USB 2.0 ports here, which actually, if you do live streaming and you have RGB peripherals and that sort of thing, you're not really using those five and 10 gigabit ports. It sort of makes sense that there would be this much USB 2 connectivity here, especially if that's a cost saving measure. I'd rather have USB 2 ports than no ports at all, if that makes sense. Now, if you wanted to rock add in Thunderbolt, <coughs> USB 4, you totally could. It has the control header here in the corner. You've got the extra USB connectors on the motherboard, USB 2 as well as USB 5 gigabit, as well as USB-C, as well as more USB 5 gigabit. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. You've also got the M.2 for Wi-Fi, and uh, let's see, that's special on the back of the motherboard. But we've got the live mixer aesthetic on the front and the back. It's, it's all business everywhere. And from far away, the rear I.O. looks seriously impressive, especially for a board at this price point. Close up, you notice there are USB 2 ports, which again, I'm not knocking it for. I'm just saying, don't get super excited that it's got a bajillion five or 10 gigabit USB ports. It has eight USB 2 ports, not quite as many USB 3 ports, but I think that's good, at least in my case, because I've got a lot of USB 2 peripherals. Also in the box, you get two ASRock Velcro straps. You get your violent orange manual. You get your ASRock powered case badge and two six gigabit SATA ports and all of the M.2 mounting accoutrement that you could possibly need if you're gonna rock three M.2s on this, because you totally could. So the live mixer has a little bit of a secret. My secrets are leaking out with the motherboard secrets. It's, it's a lot of fun. Thunderbolt, not Thunderbolt, <laughs> PCIe over stuff. You see, the old hotness was TCP IP over carrier pigeon. The new hotness is PCIe over carrier pigeon. And what I mean by that, is this. This is the X670 expansion kit from ASRock, and this is one seriously cool piece of kit. Now the Live Mixer Special Edition, we've got a connector on the motherboard, a J2 connector, that this PCIe X4 card plugs into, this ribbon cable. But when you break this down, there's two M.2, two SATA ports, three USB, 10 gigabit, and 10 gigabit ethernet, all on one what sort of crazy monstrous PCIe card is this? This card actually has one of the AMD Promontory chipsets on a PCIe card? Yes, this thing is so innovative, I did a totally separate video on it, you should check it out. But you use this in the bottom slot connected directly to the motherboard, and then that chipset, this is more chipset, another chipset chip, because it gives you PCIe lanes and M.2 and everything else. I mean, you've got all the stuff. So you get your M.2 back that you had on the motherboard. There's actually two on here. As long as they're not busy at the same time, it's not gonna bottleneck. Plus your one gigabit ethernet, plus more type A and type C USB ports. And SATA, all on one card. 10 gigabit ethernet, it's right here. And it works, I think. 
I don't have the details on that just yet. Be sure to check out my other video on this card. But you get 10 gigabit plus all this other stuff on one PCIe 4 interface, and you can use that on this motherboard and still have another X4 expansion slot for capture card or whatever you need. Plus you got your triple slot for your GPU. So this is really, with this add-in card, an incredible amount of connectivity. Now I've showed this really cool add-in card feature on my live mixer motherboard, but that's not gonna work on your live mixer motherboard. Why? Because my motherboard has been modified and I've got a special PCIe card that you can't really buy anyway. Don't think you're gonna be able to buy an add-in card to convert your live mixer motherboard into X670. The retail boards do not do that. Let me just be clear. But our B650 live mi mixer that, that I have, it's been modified. I wanna dive in with our motherboard in a little bit more detail. All right, so we've got the dual eight pin power connectors. We've got our AM5 socket. We've got our DDR5 interface. Now DDR5 6000 is the sweet spot when we're talking about AM5. You wanna buy your Expo rated memory kit for DDR5 6000. ASRock does support up to DDR5 6400 with an overclock. Those non-X CPUs that I have do work up to DDR5 6200. We'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. At the rear I.O., we have our eight USB 2.0 ports, two five gigabit ports, two lightning gaming ports. So you've got ports that have augmented power delivery and then you have other ports for lightning gaming for fast responsive uh, human interface peripherals. If you have things like a really nice USB 3 keyboard with a really insane polling rate, you can use that in the USB 3 port. Then you got your two and a half gigabit LAN, 10 gigabit type A and type C ports. And then your analog audio ports, analog audio out, in, and your optical SPDIF. For video, it has HDMI and DisplayPort. This motherboard also has optional Wi-Fi. This motherboard doesn't come bundled with Wi-Fi, but there is a version that does. And it, when it does, it's gonna use this M.2 Wi-Fi, which will live underneath your graphics card. For power delivery, we're talking about a 14 plus two plus one configuration, which is more than adequate for even an overclocked 7950. You can push north of 300 watts with that, just the raw board level. But you know, through the socket, the limitation through the socket's a little bit lower than that, but you know, you're, your all core overclock on your 7950X. You could do that with this motherboard, no problem. And then we have three M.2 for storage. One blazing M.2 up here with a substantial aluminum heatsink, and then two more down here, sort of at the bottom of the board. In terms of other peripherals, we have two USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard, two SATA headers, and two five gigabit, 30 pin USB connectors, as well as one type C connector. We have our standard 24 pin ATX power connector, addressable RGB headers, not one, but two at the top edge. We also have two four pin fan headers for the CPU at the top edge of the motherboard, three four pin fan headers along the bottom edge of the motherboard, one four pin fan header at the mid board here. And that'll pretty much do it for all of our fan connectors on this motherboard. Now the physical layout and the PCIe slots and the support for this motherboard is particularly good. Um, we kind of sort of expect this from ASRock. Sometimes they forget to dot an I and cross a T and then something happens, but Linux support and IOMMU groups on this are, is a standout, especially even among AM5 motherboards. Now you do have to enable IOMMU and PCIe AER and some other options in BIOS that I've set here. But once you do that, your IOMMU group breakdown is pretty good. I've got a hardware PLX bridge, that's the, the older liquid HHHL card, as well as two PCIe add-in peripherals, including a 10 gigabit Intel, dual Intel X540 ethernet adapter, plus two M.2s in here. Now there's not three M.2s because the third M.2, the one on the bottom left, shares bandwidth with the PCIe slot. So if you, gonna run all three PCIe peripherals, you don't get all three M.2 slots. But this is still a really good breakdown, especially for a motherboard at this price point. And pretty much everything is in its IOMMU group, including the onboard graphics from this. So if you wanted to run two graphics cards onboard and not onboard, that should work for this system, although I didn't have time to fully test that. If you wanna see that, that's gonna be on the level one Linux channel. If, uh, or ask me on the forum or whatever, if you, wanna, if you wanna take a look at that. The CPU that I'm using here again is the 7900 non-X, particularly good choice for a Linux workstation, 12 cores, a lot of good support. Also, DDR5 6200, pretty stable on this platform as well. In terms of other BIOS features and everything else on the BIOS screen, I really didn't see anything that stood out as, oh, that's really cool or that's really different. We still got the violent orange background that goes with the live mixer aesthetic. That works really well. BIOS updates. Did do a flashback test because I was testing the non-X CPUs. That worked pretty well. Uh, we've got DisplayPort and HDMI out. Both of those worked fine, tested that, and got the system to post even before we added a graphics card. So overall, 
Azrock's done a pretty good job with this combo Agiza 1.0.0.3 because sometimes that's important for the IOMMU breakdown and everything else. And this was the publicly posted beta BIOS because I've learned to also check that when I'm doing the IOMMU breakdowns because it's like, oh, this BIOS is completely different than this BIOS. Ah, somebody's going to have to build a website database for that. <sighs> There's so much to do. Overall, I like this board. I like it a lot. I would have, I mean, if you look at the PCIe slot layout, this slot layout would have been a pretty good choice for the Tai Chi. Now the Tai Chi will let you rock X8, X8, PCIe 5. That's really awesome in a world where SLI is a thing or Crossfire is a thing, but that's not the world that we find ourselves in. I think it makes a lot more sense to have mixed PCIe 3, 4, and 5 slots on motherboards these days because most peripherals, let's face it, they're not PCIe 5, they're not even PCIe 4. We're still rocking a lot of PCIe 3 peripherals. And having that chipset, being able to deliver a PCIe 3, X4, or X8 slot, and then mux that data together and send it up to the CPU at PCIe 4 speeds, there's no bottleneck there. You can totally rock eight PCIe 3.0 lanes, send that back to the CPU at PCI Express 4.0 by four, just four lanes, and that will not bottleneck. So that's a, it's a pretty good layout. So this motherboard, I think, has a better layout even than the Tai Chi X670E for enthusiasts and, and everybody else. Now, PCIe 5, you miss out a little bit on the PCIe 5 features with this motherboard. You miss out on some of the higher end options with the 650 chipset from AMD, but there's a cost savings and a complexity savings and everything else. And if you want to, you've got enough PCIe slots, you can add back 10 gigabit ethernet. You can go on eBay and get a you know, $35, $40 older 10 gigabit ethernet card. That Intel X540 is gonna work great at 10 gigabit. Not gonna work great at two and a half or five gigabit. You need at least the X550 and you gotta do a firmware upgrade for that if you're on the Intel side, but you know, Broadcom, Marvell, Aquantia, you know, other 10 gig solutions, things beyond the 2.5 gigabit NIC that's built in, you got two PCIe slots you can do that with. And you do have the blazing M.2. So you at least do get some really high speed connectivity on this motherboard for your storage. I mean, it's past CES and we haven't seen PCIe 5 storage. And what we have seen has furnace sized heat sinks on it, which I don't think anybody really is super excited about for their M.2 solutions. Maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know, we'll see. But overall, ASRock's put a pretty solid package together here. I get why they're, you know, targeting this for live streamers, live mixer, because a lot of the time, those folks have PCIe capture cards, which can be one, two, or four lanes. Uh, if you go the hardcore Magewell route for your PCIe capture card, you know, four lanes, multiple HDMI inputs, this motherboard will totally support that. But most of your capture cards, one, two lanes. Not really a problem, but you get some future expandability. So overall, good job, ASRock. And this has been a quick look at the Live Gamer Motherboard Series Orange Edition. There's a, there's also, I think, a, a another one that's like blue. Maybe that's maybe that's some other. There's, it's you know, kudos for ASRock for trying something different. I'm Wendell. This is Level One. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level One forums. Let me know what questions you have about this motherboard platform or otherwise, or if you're considering a build. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.